Hey everybody, Joe Conkley in the shop. Today we're going to look at a uh, really interesting 1937 Martin D-18 guitar, including the cool hammered case here. The guitar itself just has the beautiful, worn-in, well-played look. Um, needs a lot of work. Very little has actually been done to the, the guitar other than just played a lot. Um, and so there are no previous repairs to deal with. The first thing that it's going to need is a bridge reglue. Yeah, the, the bridge was already off when I got it, but the beautiful part of that is that it is the original bridge. I'm going to take these original bridge pins and put them in my little holder here. Oops, uh, nice original uh, 30s Martin bridge. It's going to clean up nice. When it did come off, it came off quite clean. The top underneath the bridge is in really good shape. Just a little dirt there. Quite a few top cracks that are going to need attention. You can see the original end pin with a crack right here across the end block that will have to be addressed. A little bit of the uh, old strap, which a lot of times it's called a neck cord. That's what we call it. It's got a little piece of the old neck cord on it there. A couple of back cracks, at least one there. Back braces are pretty solid. The finish on the back of the neck is pretty much worn off with some, uh, I believe, what are clamping marks up here. The frets are extremely worn, like all six strings with major marks down to the wood all the way up to like the seventh fret. So someone started to do a little refretting. They decided that at least the first three frets needed to be replaced. So they pulled those frets and rather than setting them aside or throwing them out or recycling them, they decided that they would pull the last three frets take these three original frets and install them up there. As you can see, they're quite a bit more narrow. The neck uh, profile or the fingerboard profile tapers um, from the nut down to the last fret. It's narrower here and wider up here. They pulled these three frets and popped them in down there, which is kind of an interesting look. But that's gonna, um, that will not interfere with my work when I do a complete refret of the guitar. No, so it needs to have the neck reset. And there is quite a bit of wear on the interior here. There is a bridge plate, a piece of maple on, on, on the underside of the top here. Um, and a fair amount of wear on that bridge plate from the uh, ball ends and the pin of the string and the tension of those strings. So what I'm going to do is to patch all those um, bridge plate holes on the interior and I'm going to use a couple of really handy tools from Stuart McDonald, the bridge plate saver. So what this allows me to do is to cut a hole on the interior, I can do it from the outside of the guitar here, that will accommodate a patch that I can make with this tool. So this is the patch cutter is the um, tool that will allow me to, to create the cavity to fit that patch. You can make the patches out of any material you want. I, of course, want to make it out of some uh, maple. And this is a piece of maple that has already had a few patches cut out. And you can see they're round patches. This is some, um, some material from rosewood that we use to cut some rosewood patches. You can see that there, uh, this is what it looks like when you start to cut the patch, it usually has to go the whole way through here. But the patch has a dome on the top. And that, this tool will cut the cavity that accepts that domed patch. So, let's start. I've already set the depth of this cutter for the proper depth for the bridge plate. And so what that go, that inserts here, in through the in indexes, off the, uh, bridge pin hole, the existing bridge pin hole, threads up in there, 
this plate, padded brass plate goes on there and draws that cutter up to the proper point. This little handle goes on here. And all I have to do is spin that cutter. It's just coming up to the underside there. There now, just hit the underside. All I have to do is turn this. Every once in a while I gotta go do a counterclockwise turn to release some of the material that it is cutting. I don't know if you can hear that. That little grinding noise there. You probably can't hear it, but I can hear it. And it is making that cut. I'm doing that. Cutting that hole all the way to the depth of that uh, sleeve that goes around the cutter that will set the depth of this cavity. You can hear it a little more now. I'm getting there. It doesn't take a lot of time to get this cut. It feels like it's registering there. I think I will take a look inside. Make sure I'm at full depth there. Yep. There you go. That's what we want to see right there. There's that cutter registered on the, the uh, bridge plate itself. See all the, the uh, bridge plate, maple bridge plate material in the cutter there. That's all the stuff. That's the, that's the hole itself. Make sure that the hole is in. Yeah, that's pretty good. There's the cavity itself right there, and uh, that will accept the patch. So what I will do. Here is some, um, as each patch goes in, it overlaps the one beside it. So I have to do every other hole first. So I'll do the first string, third string, fifth string, create those holes, glue in the patches, then I'll do the second, fourth, and sixth. And those, um, the cutter will overlap those patches, cut each one. And uh, with each patch, I'm trying to find a piece of maple that as sim similar as possible to the plate itself and with the grain orientation in the same way so that the patches will blend into the original um, bridge plate. But because the plate is in good condition, does not need to be changed, it's glued in properly, uh, no um, structural compromises there, this, that makes this patching job the best, um, the best thing to do to save that original bridge plate. And uh, from there, a lot of other things to do. This will be an ongoing project. You'll, uh, hopefully we'll be able to show you the, the progress that I make through the whole thing. But um, bridge plate patches, numerous top cracks to be glued and pleated, a general cleaning of the top and the whole guitar. Um, then we'll, we can move on to the re-gluing the bridge. Uh, re-drilling the bridge pin holes and tapering that those holes to fit each pin properly and we can remove the neck do the neck reset reset the neck and refret it and I'm sure there's a couple other things in there that I'll be addressing also so it'll be an interesting uh, ongoing project to restore this beautiful old guitar and that's what I've got for you in the shop today everybody Thanks for uh, tuning in. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Remember, uh, like us and share us on Facebook and all those other fun social media platforms. Take care. Bye-bye.